So Romo is a smartphone robot that uses your iPhone as his brain. Uh, my name is Keller Renato. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Remoto. We're kind of a, a we're a company of nerds. We grew up watching Star Wars, Star Trek. We weren't the most popular kids in high school, but we really feel like science fiction promised us robots. There are a lot of robots today that are really expensive and they tend to exist in academic labs and factory settings. And a lot of what we're doing is we're bringing robotics out of the research lab and into people's homes, which is something that's never been done before. One of our goals is to get kids really, really excited about computer science and software development. But a lot of times it's hard to convince kids that it's exciting when they're just typing numbers into a text editor and then executing code. Instead, you're like, we need to figure out how to get Romo from here into sister's bedroom where he can harass her and like chase her around or scare her. These are problems that are fundamentally motivating to kids. And it's a natural way for kids to learn about technology and computer science in a way that they actually care about. I mean, robots captures kids' imaginations. So he is an intelligent creature that can follow your face. He can uh, be controlled from any iOS device anywhere in the world, also from any browser. So it's kind of like Skype on wheels. And then anybody can program him, so his functionality is kind of only limited to the imaginations of the people who buy him. So it's a way of telling Romo what to do through graphical blocks. One of them says, you know, if Romo sees a face, then Romo should do this. One of them says, when Romo's picked up, then Romo should do this. So if we wanted to do that, I can literally just create these if-then dependencies. Let's say if he sees a face, he'll take a picture of that face. We just hear him, he just took a picture. If you get too close, he'll get angry. If you pick him up, he'll get scared. This is kind of really just picking out a bunch of rules. And kids don't see this as programming, but they're actually learning these kind of fundamental problems in programming. When people first saw personal computers, they said, we don't need these, because they weren't a technology that they had ever experienced before, and they just didn't really know what was possible. I think we're in the same exact stage right now with personal robots. So I think the really important thing is letting an individual person train or program their robot to do exactly what they want to do without having to know how to program a robot. And he's pretty strong. He'll push this box straight off, no problem. <laughs>